Okay, for this video lecture also, I will record it. So I will continue with this uh, nurse forward oh, lecture and uh, start. Okay, no. When you say fitness forward, um, what do you mean by fitness forward? Oh, when we say it is fit forward, uh, we mean uh, a person who is of a suitable quality standard or capability to meet the required purpose or task or job. Then only uh, we, we can say it is a fit for work. Oh. Or we can also say that uh, this guy is fit for work because he's in a good health or health status that is required to carry out a specific task. So when we say fit for work, it, it refers to two conditions. Uh, oh. you are fit because you will be carry, you will be able to carry out a certain job Due to standard or due to the ability, or because you are in the health condition that uh, you can carry out a particular job. So that is the two, uh, I mean, those are the context of a fitness for works. So, uh, medical assessment for fitness for work, or uh, the main purpose is to assess the fitness for work to ensure that. The individual is fit to perform the task involved effectively and without the risk to their own and others' health and safety. So that is the main purpose of medical assessment of the fitness for work. We assess medically to ensure that his health condition is fit to carry out the task without the risk to their own, not risking themselves and not risking the other people's health and safety. So it's the main purpose of doing uh, fitness for work, uh, medical assessment for fitness for work. Okay? In terms of whether you are um, capable to carry out a particular job or not, okay, we, we don't do that. We don't do that kind of assessment. Uh, for those who only assess the health condition, see whether uh, if you carry out a particular job, uh, you will have the health risk or not, his own and other people or not. Okay, so that, that is the only thing that we do. Now, uh, why is it needed? Uh, because uh, patient's condition or worker's condition may limit or reduce or prevent them from performing their particular job effectively. Or maybe the condition made worse by that particular job. Or maybe it, it is uh, unsafe for them to do that particular job or unsafe for them and others in in uh, some of the occupational role and maybe if you carry out the job but you are cause the risk to the community and that's why we have to do this uh, medical assessment for fitness for work yes. so what are the factors that we consider when we assess the fitness for work we consider the level of skill physical mental capacity needed for uh, effective performance of the particular job for instance if you are the driver we we will assess that he has to have a sound mental capacity. He has to have a fit upper limbs so that he can you know manipulate the uh, steering wheel and so on. And uh, and he he should also have been trained and uh, been working in that particular job for a long period of time. So we will look at these skills and so on. No? For for instance, for example, like if you have a Mm. You have a uh, uh, say a uh, uh, lorry driver, you no? Know? Then he might have some, uh, for instance, uh, limitation in terms of the uh, lower limbs or uh, movement. However, he's a driver for say uh, twenty years already, no issues, are uh, very skillful. So sometimes certain limitation, even a little bit, uh, I mean, uh, if it is a small limitation, because given the level of the skill he has been uh, in the particular job for so long, uh, we will allow them to continue to work because he's very fit. I mean, he's very skillful and very used to the particular job. So with certain limitation, the workers is able to, to overcome it and still the job, job effectively. So these are the things we have to look into how huh, we assess the fitness for work. And the other thing is whether there's any possible adverse effect of the work itself or the work environment to the patient's health or not. 
no? And uh, the next one is whether there's any health and safety implication uh, to the others uh, if he continue to work in that particular job. So there are three things that we consider. Uh, uh, level of skills, performance of the work, uh, patients' health conditions, uh, any uh, environment that might worsen the health condition. And uh, if his current health condition will, will it affect the others, uh, people's health and safety or not. We follow certain guidelines uh, also, uh, certain guidelines to follow, we have certain leg legislative uh, requirement to that. Uh, so it depends on the uh, different uh, situations. Mm. So when do we do fitness for work assessment? Uh, Pre-employment, replacement, during the periodic review or after the incidents, after a prolonged absence, or maybe um, some companies send the fitness status uh, before uh, they consider whether they want to retire a particular worker uh, because of certain illnesses or not. Okay. So in all these situations, we will do a fitness forward assessment. So who is the one who doing the fitness forward assessment? Uh, medical doctor, okay, because it's related to the medical assessment. And uh, in principle, what we need to do is uh, uh, we have to assess patients' uh, residual ability uh, in terms of the uh, requirement at the workplace. Uh, meaning that uh, residual ability means that uh, whatever limitation he has, uh, you minus that limitation, uh, whatever left with uh, his ability, you try to match with the requirement in the workplace and see whether he can perform or not. So that is the concept. Uh, we put it in when we do this forward assessment. Um, assessment can be uh, just a history taking sometime, uh, but a lot of time we will require some uh, physical examination. And uh, uh, and sometimes we need to carry out certain tests. Okay. Uh, so there are a lot of things that we look at depending on the situation. Uh, in general, uh, general things like stamina, ability, uh, liability, you know, uh, and then also include things like posture, uh, mobility. This is particularly related related to the musculoskeletal conditions. Like look at the manual skills, we look at function, uh, heart function, we look at the consciousness, uh, etc., etc., all these things. So, so uh, there's no fixed uh, system. Uh, it, it all depends on what kind of assessment and what kind of job and what kind of uh, limitation that the person has. Um, so uh, when we consider work requirement, we consider the demand of the work, uh, either physically or mentally. So if the work is mentally demanding, then we assess the mental skill. If we the work is uh, physically demanding, then we assess the musculoskeletal systems. Okay? And we also look at the work environment. Oh, uh, whether he's working in a hazardous environment that uh, might you know, further fix the uh, health or not. Oh, and the other things we look at is the organizational aspect in terms of the organization of the work, the aspect in terms of the uh, time uh, to perform the job, for instance, like uh, shift work, you know, in flow period, uh, etc. Uh, and then uh, the other things are uh, economic aspect of it and the the job require uh distant traveling and whether that traveling will affect his current medical condition or not and so on. Okay. So uh, these are things we, we take into consideration on case by case basis. And uh these are the factors that are affecting a person's work performance. So uh Basically, uh, depending on the certain situation, then we are looking for different types of factors. Okay. Uh, Ignatius, are you uh, asking something? Are you trying to ask something? Right. Uh, oh, no, no, I forgot to put down. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Suddenly notice I didn't know whether you are. <laughs> it's a new hang. It's up or the old one. Okay. Anyway. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. It's okay. okay. Um, so uh, we need to match individual with the job. 
Okay, and matching the individual with the job is a professional judgment. Uh, there's no specific guideline on that. Uh, it is mainly back, based on the medical experience. That's why fitness forward assessment has to be in the the medical assessment for fitness or what has to be carried out by a medical doctor. There's no no other doctors. It's just like after seeing a patient, after seeing the patient, we 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 make a certain diagnosis, we do certain treatment. You no, know? so so this is the same thing. You know? We we is professional judgment whether uh, this guy is can fit with the job or not. So of course it comes with the responsibility la, or a liability la. And, uh, uh, Although we have sophisticated equipment, uh, for instance, like occupational therapists, uh, occupational therapists, they have certain uh, job assessment device. Uh, we measure, you know, how how many degree a person can flex his arm and uh, what is the strength, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But all the time, this is these are very rarely accessible for use uh, because these equipment are very expensive and not many centers have it. And uh, you actually do not need all this equipment to decide on the fitness for work. Uh. It, it just gives you some objective uh, objective information uh, to make more confidence that this guy is fit or not fit. Uh. Even without those equipment, a lot of time we still can do certain form of fitness for work assessment up to certain extent. Okay? And there are very wide variation in the practice between uh, different countries also. Oh, certain countries are more stringent, certain countries are more you know, lax in terms of fitness for work uh, and so on. <clears throat> so anyhow, if you send the workers to a doctor to do a, a medical assessment for fitness for work, uh, I suggest you send to a doctor who knows about the job. La. I mean that who has been practicing in occupational health uh, for some time. So, uh, then he can assess it more objectively la, or, and more accurately. Okay. Okay. So, doing the assessment, these are the limit, uh, recommendations that we will give. A fitness to work, to work without any illness. This one is uh, full license, I mean a uh, full pass, la, uh, meaning, meaning that the workers can fit to work uh, without any problem. The one sometimes we're putting fit to work with certain illnesses and caution will protect what are the cautions la, but it still can fit to work. And fit to work with some limitation. So we will specify what job you can do, what cannot do. Uh, and then sometimes we put unfit to work permanently, meaning that you cannot perform the job temporarily for a certain period of time or permanently, depending on the situation. Okay. But medical requirement is the last resort. Only if there's no treatment is possible, no further treatment is possible. And uh and other alternative job is not available in the company. Okay. And um if the employee will not accept this uh uh, uh this uh other form of treatment or other alternative jobs, you no. Know? There's no choice because employee doesn't want to work anymore. Then we can suggest for medical retirement. And uh, or if the threshold or employability for a particular job cannot be reached, uh, meaning that even if you recover, we cannot perform as effectively as it is already. Then, uh, uh, from the company perspective, it is also fair, you know. For the company, if you say that this guy you are supposed to perform this job, but because of the units you can perform, and I still employ you with full salary, it's also not fair for the company. employer. Right. So, so in this kind of situation, then we do medical retirement. Uh, Next, just ask whether medical retirement is same as medical border out. Uh, yes, yes, it's the same thing. The same thing, just uh, medical border out, usually you all use that term uh, or in company. So for medically border out, you need to... Uh, okay, depends on the situation. Um, if the employer... Uh, if the employee is a social so contributor, employer also a social so contributor, uh, what you can do is you can go for the so uh, 
uh, invalidity pension. Uh, if he if he reach a situation of which he received a social invalidity pension, uh, then he is automatically medically bonded off already. Uh, he need to arrange anymore because social already give a pension to the workers and he already said the worker is not uh, able to work anymore. Uh, so that is an invalidity. Uh, so then that is easy for the company. The other situation is uh, maybe he is not a social contributor. He is a high salary, but he end up with accident, he cannot perform the job. So then your company need to have a procedure on how to board up this worker. You know? If you don't have a procedure and you simply fire him, uh, this guy can go to the tribunal court and can sue your employer uh, because you don't give him justification why you want to uh, him straight away. So, that procedure, I think your company, your company need to establish the proper procedure. Uh, one one of the way is you need to have proper guidelines uh, in your, within your company. Generally, what you can do is uh, you can you can uh, hire uh, two two doctors uh, to assess the guy's condition and give a recommendation whether the doctor uh, and give a recommendation whether the employee can continue to work to be medically bothered out. In the government, we have our own procedure. In some sort, their own procedure. So, in your company, probably what you can do is you also have to come up with certain procedure. As long as the procedure is uh, pre-informed for the worker, sign the contract with your company. See, you are protected already. Huh? They won't be able to sue you in the tribunal court. Mm. Um. So. Uh, fitness for work does not end with medical assessment. Huh? Uh, I mean, as an OHD, lah, huh? not that we assess the fitness for work. A lot of time, we also assess other things also. Lah. Yeah? We talk to the patient, then uh, we assess the fitness for work, and if he can uh, continue to work, then we will advise on other things lah, like healthy lifestyle, reduce the reduce, uh, weight, you know, uh, so that he's physically more fit, uh, reduce the alcohol consumption, we advise them not to drink before driving, etc., etc. So, so uh, a proper occupational health practice, we have to look into all these things. Right? And want to make sure employee remain as fit as possible huh, for as long period of time as possible. This is a real example. Huh? I have a computer truck driver. Computer truck is the garbage, uh, garbage uh, collector truck. Huh? We've got an open fracture of left middle phalanx of uh, the finger. Left middle phalanx is this, this, uh, this hand, okay? Middle phalanx is here. Fracture here, this hand. hand. Okay. And also, uh, cross comminuted fracture of left olecrano with dislocation due to road traffic. So the left olecrano is here, over here. Okay. So he, he got fracture here, fracture over the finger. To me, to assess whether he can still drive Computer drug. This is a lorry. You know. So, uh, we do, we will assess. I mean, this is after the surgery. La. He went for surgery, orthopedic surgery, uh, recovered already, sent to us. So, after I assess that, we notice that he cannot grip really because of the fracture, his hand becomes stiff. You know? so, so, he can only grip with two fingers and uh, the last fingers like that. So, that is a little bit dangerous la, because you're trying a crack. You know? There's a downhill and there's a cornering. You have to, you have to, you know, uh, 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 manual the steering and you have to grip the steering very well. So for that, initially I uh, decide uh, not fit to work, but I thank him for physical therapy and kind uh, of the fingers. Uh, after a few months, then, uh, his grip strength increased and uh, become very strong. And at that time only, I sent back to uh, allow him to return to work. So this is how a uh, uh, OHD do uh, fitness for work and decide whether he is fit or not fit to carry out a particular job. So they said fitness work does not stop at assessment only. Uh, we will treat the patient. We will make sure he return to job uh, to to the job a uh, uh, certain period of time. For example, this guy, if he really cannot after six months, his finger become fixed and couldn't grip anymore. Then at that point of time, the uh, OHD should do to discuss with the employer you know, saying that uh, we feel that he is unlikely to recover anymore for the next one or two years. Then we will discuss the employer. 
they need to do. Okay, as I can put that as a no uh, permanent unfit to work. You know, if the employer still want to keep him, maybe you can give him uh, another type of job, train for another type of job, and so on. This is where the discussion with the employer come in uh, between the OHD employer. At the end of the day, we want to help the workers make sure he still has his job. Uh, to make sure he don't lose his job. At the same time, he's able to perform the job safely for himself and also for other people. For that, I think which uh, uh, and health officer or manager become the middleman. Uh, and you become very important to arrange between the OHD and the career uh, and uh, to convince both sides so that you come up with the best solution for both workers. For workers, okay. The role of the OHT is to identify the needs for and uh, establish the fitness for work assessment program. In your company, if you don't have the fitness for work assessment program, you don't have a procedure. You know? Probably this is a time that you think about certain procedures. Say, if you have certain workers end up with injury, accident, etc., before he return to work, what the company need to do? Uh, you might need to come up with certain uh, you know, process and so on. Then you inform the workers so everybody knows about that. And, you to get the commitment from the employer, and this shows that you are uh, you are actually uh, you know concerned about workers' health. And I'm sure should coordinate the fitness for work assessment activities like, uh, between OHD between and, and, uh, and the employer, and you you should look for a suitable doctor to carry out that uh, fitness for work assessment. And uh, and the other thing is uh, like I said, a lot of time fitness for work is related to the health particular health of the of worker. So uh, it is important to carry out certain health promotion activity to make sure that fitness for work, uh, fitness of all the workers is maintained in the employee, in the employee, uh, I mean in the company. So OHD role is perform fitness uh, assessment based on certain guidelines, based on clinical judgment. And uh, uh, OHD should have a written feedback to the company. And uh, we should follow up uh, and uh, manage the patient continuously and provide recommendation as necessary. Okay. So first of all, it's uh, just this. Uh, uh, so uh, medical fitness is relevant when illness or injury reduce the performance or effect and safety in the workplace. Okay. It's also relevant to certain gadgetless tasks. Standard A6. Now, this is uh, referring to the medical surveillance that I mentioned to you just now. Uh, for medical surveillance, you notice that we have medical remote protection, right? Yeah. Medical remote protection is also actually a form of the fitness for work. Uh. Basically, we detect the risk, we remove them. Uh, we make sure they are recovered, and then after that, they continue to, you know, to carry out the job. So that is also a form of fitness for work. But for that kind of fitness for work, there's no limitation in terms of um, uh, the uh, employee. Uh, the, the aim here is to make sure the work condition will not cause further negative health uh, on a particular job. Let me mention to you uh, now uh, one of the purpose of fitness for work assessment. Okay. So medical surveillance is actually uh, in a way, a form of fitness for work assessment as well. Okay. And uh, uh, finally, I want to say that the uh, medical fitness is charged in relation to work, uh, not patient scheme. Huh? So uh, we are uh, we are not referring to whether he's eligible to get a pension or not. We are judging relation to whether he's able to perform a particular job or not. Or not. That's it. Okay. After, after the decision is made, whether it's fit or not fit, uh, then if the pension comes with the uh, uh, medical retirement, then that's good. Lah. We don't we don't decide on fitness for work uh, based on uh, whether he or she can get the pension or not. So, so that is very important because a lot of time the uh, workers uh, come to see doctors uh, because they want to get a pension. So they want doctor to assess whether he can be medically bothered out so that he can get a pension or not. So those are not ethical to do. Huh? Um, okay, so 
That's it for fitness for work lecture. Um, you have any questions or not? No, if not, then I stop.